Hello everyone. The world today looks inherently different from what it was just two years ago. For one, technology is clearly a disruptor. And there is no doubt anymore that technology will continue to be at the core of all significant human pursuits. Today I'm joined by Anant Maheshwari. Anant is president of Microsoft India and responsible for Microsoft's presence and business in India, also for stakeholder engagement with policymakers, customers, and partners. Anant, it's wonderful to be able to be here in person with you and to be able to talk about the Cisco-Microsoft partnership. Daisy, thank you so much for having me here. And it's totally a pleasure to meet in person in this hybrid world. I'm a big believer in the hybrid. And I'd love to talk about the partnership. But even as we get going, I'd love to get your sense of all the trend lines that we are seeing at this point in time, especially as we emerge uh, from the pandemic and a lot of other volatility that's happening around us. I think there's so many things going on, Anant. It, you know, it's such a wonderful time to be in tech. So much going on, so much so that the finance minister is saying that the digital economy of India will be at $800 billion by 2030. But let's just stick to one or two that is pertinent uh, in the context of our partnership. I think the first one is something that we've been talking about for some time, the rapid acceleration of cloud. And it's only been going gangbusters mm -hmm. since the pandemic happened. Uh, if you look at the trajectory of cloud growth, public cloud growth in India, it's about anywhere from 20 to 25 percent cargo. Uh, Thirteen and a half billion dollars is the number that is put on the 2026 market. And we're seeing the same thing at Cisco as well. In all of our cloud delivered portfolios, we're seeing the same robust demand and growth. So that's on the technology side, if I have to talk about one in the context of the partnership. Uh, and the interesting thing is the adoption of cloud in tier two, tier three cities in India and in very traditional sectors like education, governance, healthcare. So that's one, one aspect from a technology standpoint. I think from a business standpoint, the opportunities that of the new digital world and all the possibilities that it can bring to life, all the revolutionary possibilities that it can bring to life. But with that comes this understanding that not any one party can do it all alone. The outcomes that our customers want to see from us call for technology providers and leaders like us to play together in newer ways. So clearly, collaboration and partnership at the center of everything we're doing to make these tremendous possibilities of the digital world come to life uh, for our common customers. So I think those are the two, one from a business standpoint and maybe one from the tech standpoint that I'll pick uh, to focus on in today's conversation. Uh, where are you seeing the most uh, growth opportunities in this uh, part of the world, Anand? So Daisy, I'll build on what you just said and let me first uh, start on this whole cloud momentum uh, that you spoke of. It is something that is changing across the world and I think India is leading it. So first up, it is very much expected that by 2025, a lot of the workloads that exist today will be very, very much on the cloud and especially the new ones, nearly 95% or more uh, are likely to be uh, on the cloud. So, so this is not a momentum that is a mix, it's truly unidirectional as we see it. We all speak about this, every company is a digital company today. Whether you're in manufacturing, you're in banking and financial services, you are of course an IT enabled services player, you're in public sector and government, or you're a small and medium corporate, and especially our digital natives. They're all digital companies. And we've seen that all of them are asking for very specific industry specific solutions uh, for themselves. So that is the trend line that we see that it's not just horizontal tech solutions, it's also uh, the needs of one individual industry can be different from the others. And that is where partnerships uh, come into a very big part of our core business model. Microsoft is a very much partner led company. Uh, we totally take all our solutions to market through partners and in India, uh, we do this completely. So. If I look at the, the trend line that we've seen even accelerate in the last few years, is how the definitions in the partner landscape are changing. We see almost every company being a partner to us in the tech industry. Now, the traditional channels exist, but more importantly, it's the independent software vendors and the software solutions that a lot of our partners get complements a lot of the solutions that we may have already. And, and we truly go to these 
industry solutions with that mindset that a number of them will come through ISV and through our, uh, our advisory relationships. The Cisco relationship is really on the ISV side and we see a lot of uh, partnership uh, potential there. So I'm really excited about how even the partnership will play out in the broader trend lines of the cloud, the industry specific solutions and, and the general change in the ecosystem uh, as we go ahead. So I'd love to get your point of view on our partnership. So Anant, I think uh, you talked about that massive journey to the cloud, right? Every customer, every institution is asking uh, themselves, what is their cloud strategy? How cloud ready are they? And you can't talk about a cloud strategy in the absence of the cloud connectivity conversation. Because finally, you know, the user of a workload or an application on the cloud is, is somewhere out there in the ether as we call it, right? How that user will connect to cloud is important. How will that experience of that user, of that application, uh, and how will that user be productive using a workload on the cloud? That is an important conversation. And of course, how do you do all of this in a secure fashion is also very important. And I think if these three questions are what our customers are asking us, uh, then this is where the partnership uh, is also most important to us as well as to our customers to be able to address these questions more effectively for them. So for example, on the connectivity side, I think there is great momentum and synergy between mm -hmm. technologies like Office 365 and our software-defined WAN technology. If you're looking at the network visibility and application visibility uh, conversation from Cisco, which is Thousand Eyes or AppDynamics, that is what partners and customers will depend on to make sure that cloud services are being delivered effectively at the edge. So these are the uh, primary points of, you know, the pivots around our partnership really focus on network visibility, network assurance, application visibility, application assurance, uh, software-defined WAN, and of course the security portfolio, which is so important to make sure all connections are secure in the world of today. So that's where the partnerships are. And I know, Anand, that you in particular and Microsoft have been forging many of these collaborations in the marketplace. And I just explained to me a little bit about that philosophy. Uh, how does Microsoft view these types of partnerships, one with Cisco and others? I think we've spoken about this in the past. Many of our teams may even think of us not truly being coming from that partnership in the past because we were in, in some spaces, it's a very, very small sliver where there may be even competing products. But I think it's a largely a collaborative cooperation kind of framework that we have established over the last seven to eight years. And that is the business model of Microsoft. And with Cisco, I think globally we have now such strong solutions that are intrinsically built on Azure. And the Cisco engineering team has done a lot of work in, in, in creating that, that uh, capability that is seamless. And therefore our sales and marketing teams now really need to pick this up and make the, the real opportunity and the outcomes real for our customers. Because at the end of the day, it boils down to having that joy with our customers uh, in working this. I'll start with uh, a couple of examples that you took. I think uh, especially when you speak about the, the edge capability that, uh, that Cisco brings in, I think that works very strongly with the Microsoft uh, IoT Azure Hub, uh, which, is, uh, which is really then complementary to each other uh, in terms of making those solutions. You spoke about a lot of the networking capabilities that uh, that you bring in uh, that is again very very complementary uh, to the solutions we provide both on azure and office 365 uh, as uh, as we create solutions uh, for our customers so daisy both of us spoke about the solutions from cisco and microsoft coming together and i think the beauty is that these are all available on the commercial marketplace uh, and they are therefore seamless in terms of go to market our joint partner ecosystem can really make this scale uh, and then our teams have to really come together now uh, to truly make a win-win for our customers and also therefore drive this partnership with Cisco and Microsoft. At the end of the day, Daisy, as uh, you and I spoke, it's very important for our customers to see this, uh, this real success coming from our partnership. I am a big believer in how the Cisco and the Microsoft partnership can really be a big one for the country. It's exciting times ahead, Anand, and all of it focused on making outcomes possible for our customers and our partners. The market perception of Cisco and Microsoft are as competitors, when the reality is that the competition is in such a small area, in such a small part of our wide portfolios. 
the power of this partnership is to bring the best of what Microsoft has and we have in a world that is rapidly transitioning to the cloud. Thank you so much for this conversation and for being here, Anand. Thank you so much, Daisy, for having me here. It's been a pleasure.